And number three. So let's think of a third one. Number three. Um. Nadine, what about time of upload? Do you think any of that matters? You know, being consistent, like when you publish your stuff. <laughs> Cut it off. to get a chance to talk to Bart and more importantly stuff about growing a YouTube channel and things like that. I've started trying to do it myself and it's just a long process. So I wanted to get Bart to kind of chime in and give us three tips that could help you and help grow your audience. Uh, the first tip that I think um, is highly slept on and I think a lot of people, the reason why they, they do this is because they watch people that they like on YouTube and so they kind of see things that other people are doing and they immediately try to copy that. I think the first thing that's the most important is finding out what's important to you. Right. So tell, figure out what story you want to tell, what's important to you and why you want to tell it. And I would say that's step number one because there are so, people are always going to have more money than you, better production than you, but they can't outdo you more than you. Right. So if you come with a unique voice, like I feel like Kevin Hart has. Right, right. He was able to come with being short, but sexy, but badass and a rock star all at the same time. And no one can replace that. No, he's he's definitely that exploded. Yeah. He's huge right now. So I think doing you is the most important thing you can do from, from the get go. That, you know, and people see when things aren't genuine. True. You know, they yeah. know when you're putting on a, an act and that's, yeah. That's what people have on TV. If you want to watch that, I think that's kind of the beauty of it is that the YouTube thing, you can do your own thing and be you and find a smaller niche audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find, find like-minded yeah. individuals, yeah. Oh, number two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So number two is definitely consistency of upload. And uh, so there's a story that um, one of my old comedy writing teachers used to tell me. And he was telling me that like there was this class, like a pottery class, and they told all the students, you only have one chance to make the best pot that you can make. And they told another class, and they said, make as many pots as you want. We'll, we'll put all of them in the kiln, and they'll all come out. And afterwards, the ones with um, the, the ones that made as many pots as they could, they came out with a lot of great pots. Whereas the ones that were so focused on making that perfect pot, they had nothing. Okay. And so I think the, the lesson here is so many people, they get caught up on the little stuff, but they fail to realize that in five years, whatever you make now, it's going to be shit anyways. So the most important thing is just to do what you love and keep doing it and practice makes perfect and don't get caught up on the little stuff. Stay consistent. Keep uploading. Right. And don't let yourself hold yourself back. Don't let, I think it was a, there's a Casey Neistat video and one of the quotes he talks about is don't let, don't let the pursuit of perfection get in the way of good enough. Yes. yes. And I think that says a lot that at some point, get this out there and move on and create another thing. Yeah. And I think him being consistent, you know, as a filmmaker, watching his stuff, I mean, he's doing, you know, a daily vlog. And he said, the problem is I would, I would film something and then focus, focus, focus. And then I'd be three months away from when I filmed it. And I don't care about it anymore. True. And so then it would just get shoveled. Whereas now I'm forcing myself to put out content every day. And he yeah. says, I'm a better filmmaker, I'm a better storyteller because I'm doing it daily. And that's a mistake that we're even making until this day. So with our main channel, uh, Just Kidding Films, we did sketch comedy for a long, long time. Really? Yeah, and we would spend weeks writing, weeks editing before we even filmed that. And then afterwards, we took a step back and we realized how much man hours we're putting into making these short films when this type of energy probably should be used better on a feature film. So now we use that good enough mentality where you have to understand what platform and what format you're trying to do. And don't you don't don't treat like a small meat as if it was Olympics. Right. You know? Yep. So it's awesome. For number three for us, uh, that would be collaboration. Okay. And I think that works on both ends. One, it works where you get to share audience, cross yeah. market, and you get you guys get to kind of dip into each other's demographics and grow that way. The other end, it's everyone they arrive at their creativity in a different way. So to be able to see how someone else works and to kind of share ideas that way, like behind the camera stuff, behind what you see on YouTube and, and, and any other platform, that is very valuable too. It's being able to, it's almost like you take them to school and then take you to school. Sure, and everybody gets a little bit better because of it. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's happened in music, that's happened in everything. People Even lifting. Have, yeah. 
Same that, thing. It's always great to get and train with new people. That's kind of the whole drift of lifting thing is I want to continue to learn. And I think there's something to learn from anyone who's put anybody. time in under the bar, right? Yeah. Anybody. And if you know me as a guy who's spent 10 years lifting or you know 17 years lifting, man, if I can learn anything new that benefits me tomorrow, I'm stoked. True. Yeah. So it's so. The same here. Like there's times where we collaborate with smaller channels or bigger channels and. You can learn just as much from a small channel, or there's like maybe there's some values that you forgot because sure. you've grown so big, and then you you forgot to focus on the little things. And whereas you can work with bigger channels, and you can see how much more efficient they are, and how much more big picture they are than you. And you can learn from just about anybody as yeah, long as you keep an awesome. open mind. Keep an open mind. So there's your three tips. Use those, and uh, be more awesome. Thanks a bunch. Hope you guys enjoy this stuff from Barquan. Those are your three tips. Remember, number one is do you. Number two is being consistent in your uploads. Look at guys like JK Films are doing 150 uploads. Casey Neistat's doing one every day. I try to do about five a week. You're good YouTubers that people are gonna follow and really share with. Those people are doing it every day. It is a job, they go to work and they get the work in. And number three, is just simply collaborate. Reach out to some channels that are kind of on the same level as you, slightly different market or kind of in the same market, and reach out and trying to talk to their audience. I just recently did one with Obese to Beast and getting in front of Bart Kwan and the rest of his crew, the Barbara Brigade family, uh, Brandon Campbell, Silent Mike, all of these guys are, are people that I can share content with and put out some neat original stuff. So those are your three. Hope you guys enjoy it. Spread hate, always party. Thanks for watching. New Drift Lifter coming next week.